Houston, we have a problem. societies dominated by production, everything that was once lived has become a mere representation. Life is presented as an immense accumulation of spectacles. The many fragmented views of reality and the world regroup themselves into a new unity as a separate pseudo-world that can only be looked at. All media work us over completely. They are so pervasive in their personal, political, economic, aesthetic, psychological, moral, ethical, and social consequences that they leave no part of us untouched, unaffected, unaltered. The medium is the massage. The medium is the massage. <laughs> the boundaries between life, media, and consumer culture are engineered and merged seamlessly into a single entity, which is the spectacle. Schizophrenia may be a necessary consequence of literacy. The spectacle is not a collection of images. It is a social relation between people that is mediated by images. And now, a word from our sponsor. It is not a mere decoration added to the real world. It is the very heart of this real society's unreality. In all of its particular manifestations, news, propaganda, advertising, entertainment, the spectacle represents the dominant model of life. Because after all, you can't beat the real way. It is just the affirmation of the choices that have already been made by the ruling system. The cycle is a familiar one. People develop needs, which are then superficially met, leading to more needs, further perpetuating the cycle. Since the spectacle both introduces these needs and offers the superficial solutions, it serves as a total justification of the existing system. Now hold it. Uh, that's part of the script. Though the spectacle falsifies reality, it is nevertheless a real product of that reality. Conversely, real life is invaded and altered through the contemplation of the spectacle and ends up aligning itself with it. Publicity both promises and threatens. It plays upon fear, often the fear of not being desirable, of being unenviable. It suggests that you are inadequate as you are, but it consoles you with the promise of a dream. A new reality emerges within the spectacle as life imitates it and the spectacle becomes real. It's all true. It's all real. Nothing here is fake. Nothing you see on this show is fake. It's merely controlled. At first inspection, the spectacle is an affirmation of appearances and an identification of all human social life and its appearances. This state of being envied is what constitutes glamour. And without social envy, glamour cannot exist. But a more in-depth and critical investigation reveals that the spectacle is a visible negation of life, a negation that has taken on a visible form as life is reduced to a single dimension of appearing. I'll have what she's having. 
The spectacle presents itself as a vast, inaccessible reality that can never be questioned. Its sole message is what appears is good and what is good appears. Since everyone is a part of it and wants to be part of it, no one questions it. Just as pre-shaped parts became components of, say, an airplane, human specialists became components of a great social machine. The passive acceptance it demands of us is already effectively imposed by its monopoly of appearances, its manner of appearing without allowing a reply. Popular culture and society in general are a one-way discourse rather than a conversation. We have now to accept the fact and responsibility that the entire human environment is an artifact, an art form, something that can be staged and manipulated like show business. In this one-way discourse, just like in show business, talking back has undesirable consequences. In the spectacle, which is the visual reflection of the ruling economic order, goals are nothing, development is everything. The spectacle aims at nothing other than itself. The spectacle is able to subject human beings to itself because the economy has already totally subjugated them. It is nothing other than the economy developing for itself. When all of the experiences of the real world are distilled into images, these images become real beings, dynamic fictions that provide the direct motivations for people's hypnotic behavior. Uh, the word narcissist means narcosis, numbness, in our technological gadgetry and gimmickry and so on. We don't think that is merely a part of our own physical organism extended out there. We're like narcissists, completely numb. Now, when we put out a new part of ourselves, uh, extend a new part of ourselves by technology into the outer environment, we protect ourselves by numbing that area. By flattening experience to a single sensory dimension, the spectacle philosophizes reality, reducing everyone's concrete life to a universe of speculation. Philosophy was never by itself able to supersede theology. Much in the same way, the spectacle has not dispelled religious beliefs, but instead brought them down to earth and to all things material. The illusory paradise that represented total denial of earthly life is no longer projected into the heavens. It is embedded in earthly life itself. As long as necessity is dreamed up by society, dreaming will remain a social necessity. The spectacle is the bad dream of modern society in chains and ultimately expresses nothing more than its wish for remaining asleep. Everyone is preoccupied with looking for happiness in the cycle of desires, purchases and appearances. They do not want to wake up to deal with the lucid world issues such as environment, poverty, or war. What happens out there happens to strangers whose fate is meant to be different from ours. What happens in the dream is meant to happen to us. The spectacle is also the guardian of that dream. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No help a loss. Above us, only sky. Imagine all people living for today. The color girls say peace. The spectacle is the ruling order's non-stop discourse about it. Self. It's never-ending monologue of self-praise, it's self-portrait, the stage of totalitarian domination of all aspects of life. 
Ours is the first stage in which many thousands of the best trained minds have made it a full-time business to get inside the collective public mind. In essence, it's about control. It's really about controlling what you own. To get inside in order to manipulate, exploit, control. You're going to have to, people like Metallica with very deep pockets, with very tenacious on your back all the time. <laughs> The reigning economic system is a vicious circle of isolation. Its technology and laws are carefully designed to serve its purpose and are based on isolation, contributing to that same isolation. The goods that the system chooses to produce also serve as its weapons. And I think about those people out there who are depending on us. We have more work, more help. That's how I feel about it. I do what I can, and I do it the way I do everything. <laughs> In the spectacle, a part of the world presents itself to the world as its superior. The spectacle is simply the common language of this separation. This language is also what passes as our culture. In fact, only 10 companies control Hollywood. And these are part of six giant companies which own more than 90% of all media holdings in the United States. Like it or not, a small part of the world is who controls our culture. Spectators are linked solely by their one-way relationship to the very center that keeps them isolated from each other. The spectacle thus reunites the separated, but it reunites them only in their separateness. This is because the spectacle's main social function is the manufacture of alienation. The growth generated by an economy developing for its own sake can be nothing other than the growth of the very alienation that was at its origin. Hearing this is especially gratifying for me. I would have never imagined it when I started Facebook just six years ago. So I want to thank you all for being part of making this possible. The alienation of its constituents is what ensures that the spectacular system works. But are we really doomed to be subjected to the spectacle forever? Marshall McLuhan suggests that it is the artists who have the ability to sharpen our perception because they tend to be antisocial, seeing their environments as they really are. And today anyone can be an artist. Having at our disposal an immense power of technology in form of personal computers, laptops and iPhones, along with the largest database of information in history. It is possible to now use the spectacle's own weapons against it by jamming the system. The unique nature of electronic medium is its interactivity, and it is this quality that can be used to overthrow the spectacle. The corporations are completely taking over our culture and telling us that we can only consume it, and we're saying no. We're saying we want to actually create with it, respond to it, take it, mutilate it, cut it up. We're saying, you don't ask us whether I want to have a billboard everywhere I go in my town. You don't ask me if I want to see your Nike logo everywhere I go. You don't ask me if I want to hear YouTube's music everywhere I go shopping or when I eat in a restaurant. So why do I need to ask you to take a little bit of it and make something out of it and make fun of you, critique you? Why do I need to ask? It is the business of the future to be dangerous. no Some people think Barbie needs to be liberated. Do you have a crush on anyone? Not the top. Whilst the primary target of the spectacle are human relations, the only way the spectacle can be resisted is through production of new modes of human relations. Come home, look out for Destro at the perimeter. No problem, tag. Today, though separated from what they produce, people nevertheless produce every detail of the world with ever-increasing power. Economies and governments rely on this power of production. They also rely on our mindless consumption. 
If people choose to remain being a part of the spectacle, if they do not question the cycle they're born into, they will find themselves increasingly separated from the world they produce. The closer their life comes to being their own creation, the more they will be excluded from that life. Here in the West, the society is so affluent, so comfortable and so hypnotized that people spend their lives in a race for manufactured dreams. Dreams which are nothing more than visions. The spectacle is capital accumulated to the point that it becomes images. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave. Now you do what they told you. Now you do what they told you. 